With the help of Hashem, we are starting a new Mesechta, Mesechta Shkolem. Mesechta Shkolem is focusing on the mitzvah of giving a half a shekel every year. This mitzvah is read about in the parsha of Kisisa. The reason why we have a mitzvah of giving a half a shekel yearly was number one, all of the communal karbanos must come from public funds, meaning from funds that every yid is part of. All of the karbanos sibur were brought from the half a shekel that were given that year, and the beginning of the year, the yearly half a shekel is connected to Rosh Chodesh Nisan as it's written explicitly in the Chumash. Now the giving of the half a shekel was also used as a medium to take a census of the Jewish people. And as we'll be learning, and as we learn in Chitas, that when the giving of the half a shekel was only for every Jew to have their participation in the, commu in the communal korbanos, then even those who were not obligated to give, which were the men, women can also join. It was optional. People can give the half a shekel for their children. Why not? They will also have now their part in the communal sacrifices. But whenever the half a shekel was also used as a medium of taking a census, so if the census was to find out how many male Jews do you have, 20 and over. So then, people that were not in that category, age and gender, then they were not allowed to participate in the giving of the half a shekel, and more details will be unpackaging as we learn the Masechta. Just to begin with the Hasidic Shavart, that Machatzis, if you take the word half, Machatzis, so the middle of Machatzis is the Tzadik. And on the right and on the left of the Tzadik, you have the word Chai. And if you go to the extremities far away from the Tzadik, you have the word Meis. And as we finished off last Masechta, that Machatzis HaShekel underlines the fact that we are part of something greater than us. So I'm a half. And you're a half, so together with Avos Yisrael we become a whole. That we are the half and God Almighty is the other half, so to say, and together we become a whole. And the importance of connecting both to each other and with God through the inspiration and through the koyach of a tzaddik that inspires us both with Avos Yisrael and with our avoidas Hashem. Now, Shkalim does not have Talmud Bavli. For hundreds of years, it was already accepted that for people who are learning Talmud Bavli, they will learn the Talmud Yerushalmi on Masech the Shkalim. People ask, why punk do we learn the Yerushalmi on Shkalim? The whole Zerayim, the only Masech that we have in Bavli is Barachas. And oi gewalt, the Yerushalmi in Zerayim is like, wow. And we don't, people who learn Talmud Bavli don't, so to say, put it in their learning. That's exactly the answer. Because in order to finish the whole Zerayim, you have to learn so many Mesechtas in Yerushalmi, so people learn it when they learn Talmud Yerushalmi. In Moyed, Bavli has Gemara on every single Mesechta other than Shkalim. So to finish the Moyed in a complete way, it became accepted that we also learn Talmud Yerushalmi. However, if you will open up your Talmud Yerushalmi, you will see that the version, that the Nusach that we have here, is not exactly like the version in Yerushalmi, which is fascinating. And not only that, if you will begin to notice that there are so many different nuschois and so many emendations that you have over here that you don't have in Talmud Bavli. But nevertheless, it's very similar. Another very important similarity but difference. When you open up a Talmud Yerushalmi, you will notice that the Mefarshim and the Gemara are not the same as we are familiar with. We're not going to have not Rashi nor Taisus. Now in the Yerushalmi, in the inside of the page, which is where we would put the most important commentator, we're going to have the Karban Ha'eda. The Karban Ha'eda was written by Rabbi David ben Aftali, who lived in the 19th century, who was the Av Beisden in Berlin, in Germany. Here in, 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 the, in the Yerushalmi that's printed in Talmud Bavli, the Karban Ha'eda is put to the outside of the page. Who's in the inside? So there is one Rishon that we have on the Daf, but the Rishon only wrote his comments on the Mishnah, which takes up a big part of the, of the, of the entire Gemara. So the Rivivan, right, Rabbeinu Yehuda ben Minyaman Haraifa, he is the big Makubal that lived in the 13th century. He is the Rishon that we have, but again, it's only on the Mishnah. So we're going to have the Rivivan. We're going to have, yes, the Karban Ha'eda that's put on the outside of the Daf, where normally Toysavis would be. And then one of the master, one of the star Talmidim of the Gra 
a Yid by the name of Rabbi Yisrael of Shklov wrote two other commentators that were both put on the daf. And the first one, the inside one, is called Tiklin Chadatin. Tiklin actually means Shkolem. The new Shkolem, which is exactly the theme of the Mesechle. You have the Shkolem that people gave last year, and that may not be used for this year's communal karbonis. And then you have Right, the Tiklin Chadatin, Tiklin, the old ones and the new ones. So the new Tiklin is the common that we have in the place of Rashi under the Rivivan. And he also wrote down the teachings of the Gra, and that is in the commentator known as the Mishnas Elio. Now, as we begin the Mishnah, as we begin the Mesechta, we'll be learning that the obligation of giving a Machzis Ashekel. The obligation. And as we said, if it's not being given also as a census, then many can opt in. That's for Yidin, Koyhanim, Leviim, Yisraelim, whether you live in Eretz Yisrael, whether you do not live in the Holy Land, people of Chutz Laaretz were obligated to participate in the Machzus HaShekel. Um, however, as we will see, that the Lashon that the Mishnah, the Gemara uses is a little bit different. In the Chumash, it's Machzus HaShekel. Now, a half a shekel, a shekel in the times of the Torah is four dinner. Half a shekel is two dinner. Being that every yid gave every year a half a shekel, they began to call the half a shekel a shekel. And in order not to confuse things in the Mishnah and in the Gemara, a real shekel is called a sela, which is four dinarim. That stayed the same. Just to know, whenever we speak about a shekel, right, or tiklin, which is a shekel, it really means the, the, the biblical half a shekel, but we already began to call it the yearly, the shekel. Now the Mishnah will begin telling us that the Beisdin would have a responsibility to announce as a reminder for the people to be, get ready to give their yearly half a shekel, that announcement was made on the Shchodesh Ador. And the Mishnah therefore will already speak about other announcements that is made on Rosh Chodesh Adar, other announcements that are made or other activities that were done on the 15th of Adar. And just one final uh, intro connected to the Zman, many people ask, Shkolem belongs in Kachim. You give a half a shekel to buy the Korban Sibur, so it's connected to Kachim. Why is it in Mayit? And the answer is, is because we were obligated to give it once a year. In other words, Mayad speaks about the mitzvahs that come from time to time. And being that we give it, so to say, connected to Rosh Chodesh Nisan, so therefore it's relatively earlier on in the Seder of Mayad. Now, Bachlal, we don't have time, but it's just to bring out the issue that the Seder of Mayad has to be explained. Bachlal, the Sudanim and Mishnais have to be explained. Another difference between the Bavli and the Yerushalmi is that in the Yerushalmi, the Seder of Mayad is Psachim. Yuma and then Shkalim. By us, it's Psachim, Shkalim, and then Yuma. Everything has to be explained. Like, why not Rosh Hashanah before Yuma? Vachulei, Vachulei, we just to point out that it's the Yerushalmi, but there are still differences as we will be learning it. Now, we will be covering Pasha the Dafim are more jam packed, but they, they, are, they are different. It's going to take us a while to become familiar with the wordings of the Gemara. We will also be introduced to many new Tanoim and many new Amairoim. It's Gavaldik. And uh, so let's, let's start. I would like to give more words of introduction, but it's Pashat late. We're going to have to learn a little bit quicker to be able to cover one daf in the hour that we have allocated for it. So, Hebra, let's start. It says the Mishnah, Be'echad Ba'adar, which means Anushchoidish Ador. And part of today's daf will be is this Adarishain or is it Adarshani? And it's Dafka Adar Sheni. So we will also be speaking about Bachlal when something, let's say, when well, someone is born on a year that's a Pshan of Shuta. When do they celebrate their birthday as the Rebbe instituted the myths of celebrating a birthday? If a person has a site, is it primarily marked in Adar Ishan or in Adar Sheni? Vachule, Vachule. Bar Mitzvah. Well, that's connected. We're going to speak about this, God willing, at the end of Dav Beis. So, Be'echad Ba'adar Mashmiya Lamal HaShkolim. Mashmiya means that they would make proclamations. They would make everyone hear. Chavra, remember, it's time to, to get ready to give the half a shekel. Many details we'll have in the Mishnah. When was it given? To whom it was given? How did it make it to Yerushalayim? All right? But the Mitzvah was for us to give it. It was placed in a chamber, in a lishka where they kept all of these half a shekel coins with many pratim. How there were kupais, olive-based gimel. And not only was it placed in a chamber, 
in the temple complex, but it was also another mitzvah connected to the Shkalim, is that three times a year did, did they enter into that chamber to remove the Shkalim to buy the Karbanes Sibur. And that's called Trumas Halishka. We are not learning yet about Trumas Halishka. We're learning about the giving of the shekel or based in announcing people Hebra. We have now a month to make sure that our shkalim are given and they're sent to Yerushalayim. When, they, when, when the temple received it, then there was step number two. There was the people in charge of the shkalim removing it, but they didn't remove it once a day. They didn't remove it once a week. They didn't remove it once a month. They removed it three times a year, as we'll see. Now, once we speak about these announcements, and we're going to come back to Shkalim soon. So there was another announcement that was made every year by Echad Ba'adr, by Beisdin Ba'ala Klaim. We are not allowed to have two different types of plants, right, planted together, together with so many pratim. We have a homosechtas kalayim, right, the, the, the most stringent isur is having a grape seed with two other grain seeds, according to many, and that there's an isur to plant them together. If they are growing together in many circumstances, you may not even have benefit from it. Now, during the winter, right, things are more or less dormant. Things begin to sprout as the spring comes into play. So it was on the first day of Adar that Bezdin would announce to the owners of the fields, you go out to see whether certain plantations began to grow into each other, whether there are certain zroyim that are sprouting together, because if indeed that's happening, the Balabas would have to rip it out. And if the Balabas would not uproot it, then based in themselves, as we'll see in this Mishnah, they went out two weeks later, they went out on the 15th of Adar, and they did the job for us. But they would have preferred for us to do it. So they would announce, Chavra, check your fields to make sure that there is no development of Kilayim. Now, continues the Mishnah, Ol Mayed, Ubahamisha Asar Bay, on the 15th of Adar, we're speaking about all the things that happen on the 15th. Number one, Kairin Masa Megillah, the Megillah is read, but where? Bikrachim. Krachim means in walled cities, as we know, as we'll learn in more details in Masech Tos Megillah. Right, when you live in an Ir, then the Megillah is read on the 14th. But we're speaking about the 15th because many other things will happen Dafka on the 15th. Number two, Masech and Nesad they would repair, they would repair the roads, just to learn the Mefarshim on the Daf, so to learn one from each. So the Rivavan, I'm reading the Rishayinu, Masakin and Asad Rachim. Why would they have to fix it? Practical. Lefishin is kalkul umachmas hamayim. Because during winter, roads get uh, broken. You know, potholes begin to develop. There was the responsibility on the, on the collective, on the government, to go ahead and to fix it. When would they start fixing it? On the 15th of Adar. Fixing it prior to it was nonsensical because it was still the rainy or the snowy season. Starting to fix it later was too late because we needed for all the roads to be fixed, as we'll see. For Ari Alias Leregel, there was a the Ari Miklat Vachulei, but they would fix it on the 15th. That's when they would start. Ve'esar Achayvus on the streets. Next thing is Ve'es Mikvo Ois Hamayim. They would fix the mikvas just to learn the carbon Ha'eda. Right, Rab David ben Aftali. So four lines from the top of the Amid, where Toisvus normally is. The Mikvo Samayim says the carbon Ha'eda im Nisraba behem tit. Again, during the winter, some mikvahs got filled with uh, tit, got filled with clay, <coughs> got filled with mud. Then menakenois, and they would clean it out. Likewise, v'im nechsar shiyunan, if the, if the 40 saw was diminished, mamshichem lehemayim, umamalam oisam. So they would make this examination on the 15th. This is all I have to do with the fact that then, in, in, in Eretz Yisrael, it was basically, that's it, that's the end of the rain season. Next, in the back of the Mishnah, and v'oisin kol tzorchei harabim, and they would do all the public needs, all the public needs, God willing, we'll get there today, that will be in the top of Dav Gimel, we're going to go through various things that were left for right after winter, which means on the 15th of Adar. Another detail, they would mark the graves. Why would they mark the graves? Because in those days, the way the graves were marked was with seed, with lime, which is a material that can relatively easy get washed away if there's a lot of rain or a lot of snow. It's important for us to mark the graves. It both gives COVID for the mason. It also is good for the Chaim. We should know where so-and-so is buried. And also, primarily, that's the focus here, is that Kohanim have to stay away from a kever for them not to become Tomei. So you have to know where the kever is to know that you have to keep away from it for Amos. So if the lime would get 
so to say, washed away, then they would fix it with Sainim and Sakfaris on the 15th of Ador. Right, we had together, I think it was in Bava Basra, of Rabbi Bano'a, that he used to go around, that was his Mifzah, and he would go into the graves and he would mark the top of the graves. That's the whole story of, uh, of Mu'ara Samach Pela, how he hit to be Mitzayi in the cave, and he had a teretz to enter there with the whole Sipur, how he conversed with, with Eliezer Ebed Avram Vahuli. And finally, the last thing that the Mishnah speaks about on the 15th of Adon is, the Yoytzin Af HaLaklaim. Beis Din now sends out people. They were warned, they were told 15 days prior to Shechay Shadar, make sure no Kalayim is sprouting. And, but they, did, they didn't leave it only up to the people. They would go and make an inspection. And if they would find a field that has Kalayim in it with many Pratim, then the representatives, the shluchai, based on themselves, would uproot those, those plans, those forbidden plant shoots. Says the Gemara, going back to the first, Ba'echad Ba'adar, both Mashmim al Ashkalim and Ba'al Akalayim, Lama Ba'echad Ba'adar, why punk the first day of Adar, explains the Gemara, answers the Gemara today, Shehviyu Yisrael Ashkalim Be'oynas, in order for the Ashkalim to be brought in their right time, what is their right time? We wanted to come to the Holy Temple prior to Rosh Chodesh Nisan. The, as we mentioned, there is the giving of the half a shekel, or Belashan of the Gemara, giving of the shekel. But then there is, in the Beis Hamikdash, they would do Trumas HaLishka. Lishka means a chamber. They would enter the Lishka and they would remove for what they would need, what they approximated they would need for all the communal karbonis until the next Trumas HaLishka. So let me just say when they did it. They did it always 15, two weeks before Yom Tif. Which means, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, which is prior to Pesach, they did it two weeks before Shavuos, and they did it two weeks before Sukkot. We'll see later, was it uh, two weeks before Sukkot is Rosh Hashanah? You don't do Trumas Alishka on Rosh Hashanah, was it before Rosh Hashanah, was it after Rosh Hashanah? But it was approximately two weeks before Yantiv. And those monies, especially the one of Rosh Chodesh Nisan, was needed because all of the Karbanes Sibur, we're speaking about the daily Tamid morning and afternoon, we're speaking about all of the Shabbos, Yom Tov, all of the communal Karbanes, they needed to be bought dafke from the Tiklin Chadatin Ba'aramish, or Belash and HaKodesh, from the new Shkalim. So the Shkalim have to be there. Kedei v'titadim trumas alishka min ha'chadosha bizmano. And all of that is when very nice. So you gave a, you know, you gave a, an announcement. Some people don't need announcements. It's good bechlal to make announcements. Nowadays we have a huge remnant of this, and that is, is that from the four special parshiyos that we had, which is shkolim, zacher, para, and achaydish. The first one is shkolim, and it's always connected to the shkolim adar. Whether it is by Yashabas mevarchem adar, this is a, a, a an extension of. The fact that when the Beis HaMikdash is standing, announcements were made in shul. That Chavre, remember, we have to start giving the half a shekel. Now, says the Gemara, Vimar, just to get to the Lashen, Vimar in Tamil Bavli is Omar, not Master. You get used to this. So, Vimar Rabbi Shimon Bar Rav Yitzchak says, in words, he says, that Trumas Halishka, that we do it every year, the first Truma is on the Echad Benison. How do we know that? Because Kitri Lasa, it's done as it was done the first time we did such a thing, which is in the Midbar. And as it says, this is a Pasik and Parshas Pikude, that Vayib Achaydish Arishain, right, which is the month of Nisan, Bashana Hashain is the second year because we left Mitzrayim on the 15th of Nisan, right? Finally, the Mishkan was actually put up to the, the, the eighth day was Rosh Chodesh Nisan, so on that day, Pashon HaShem is, Be'echad L'Chodesh, Hukam HaMishkan, and V'tani Yalav, we learned the B'raisa, Be'yoyim Shehukam HaMishkan, on that day, amongst the many other things that happened on that Rosh Chodesh Nisan, Boy Be'yoyim, Nitrema HaTruma, means the money was given before, as we have in, in Truma, as we have in Kisisa, but that's us giving it to the, to the Mishkan, but when did they separate from the Lishka, monies, and again, it wasn't something that they did daily, but they did it three times a year. They took out a certain amount of money with many Pratim will have in the Mishnah. How there were boxes and how there were numbers or letters on them. But the Tur Struma happened, the Echad bin Nisan. Now, says the Gemara that Rab Tavi says in the name of Rabbi Yoishia, in Talmud Bavli, it would say, Omar Rab Tavi, Omar Rab Yoishia. Here it says, Rab Tavi, Rabbi Yoishia, but in the name of Kahana, also sometimes they were Hamish, sometimes they didn't give a Rav or a Rebbe. 
another klal that the Rebbe is someone who has smicha. So in Talmud Bavli, generally, Rebbe is a Tana, and Rav is an Amoira, because to get smicha, smicha has to be given in the Holy Land. But over here, just to know, in Talmud Yerushalmi, there were many Amoraim that had smicha also, like Rebbe Yochanan that we're familiar with. So it's, it, you have to push it, know a lot more history to know whether we're quoting a Tana or whether we're quoting an, Ama, an Amoira. Many times you get it from the context. Okay. So, Rabtavi, in the name of Rabbi Yosh, in the name of Rav Kahano, says, the, how do I know that? So he says, I have Exeter Shava. Nemar Kanan says, here refers to Parsha Spinchas. Right, we read this Rosh Chodesh. Chodshay, right, it says, Zois Oilas Chodesh, Be Chodshay, Le Chodshay Hashana. We'll learn how to teach this Pasuk in a minute. So it says over here, Chodshay, and it says, La Halon, that's a Parsha, that's a Pasuk in Parsha's boy. So we speak about Chodesh, Chodshay. So ma Chodshay shenem ala halan. In Pasha's boy, ain't moinen ala minisan. Af Chodshay shenem arkan, regarding the Korbanois, Zois, Oilas, Chodesh, Bechodshay, Lechodshay, Hashana. What's the beginning of the year? Ain't moinen ala minisan. Now, really, says the Gemara, Omar Rabbi Yoyna, that Shavak Raptavi Roisha de Masnisa, he's really quoting, even though we had it b'shem Kahana, but this is really a Braisa. And you need to have the beginning of the Braisa to better appreciate the proof from this Gezeta Shava. Like, he shouldn't have left it out. You know why they left it out? They, were, they knew more. They didn't have to speak out the whole thing. But as time went on, more had to be uh, clarified. He says, ah, he left out the beginning of the Braisa. He only said the end, but that's not the end. Now again, you have different expressions. Dal Kain Kahada. So just to read the, the Gra has a different version. I'm gonna, he writes, Loi, Loi Kain Tani, does it not say? And now we're quoting the Reisha. Bottom line is, he's bringing down the Reisha of the Braisa which is where Rav Kahana got his limut from, which will better explain what Rav Kahana is proving from this Gezeta Shava. It says in the Pasik in Parsha Spinchas, Zois Oilas Chodesh Bechachoy, Yochel Yehei Tredem Bechol Chodesh Vechodesh. Maybe every single month you should do the Truma, Truma Salishka. Talmud Leimer, no. Bechachoy, Bechachoy, Lechachoy. That you did it in the month for the months. In other words, we'll skip the parentheses, that Bechoydish Echot Hu Tairim Lechol Chachay Hashanah. Now the question is, in which month? Yachol Be'ez Echoydish Sheyirtza, or maybe every month? So that's, now is the Gzeda Shavu, it's done once a year. Nemar Khan Chachay, Nemar Lahalan, Lahalan by Boy Chachay, Ma Chachay Shenemar Lahalan Ein Moin Elam in Isan, Av Chachay Shenemar Khan Ein Moin Elam in Isan, which means, now this is the limit over here, even though we use the word Truma, that we, we give once a year the half a shekel. And it's given in order for it to reach the holy temple or the Mishkan then in the desert uh, before the Shchaydash Nisan. And then once they have the Shkalim, they would separate from the new Shkalim, from the Tiklin Chadatin, monies that was needed primarily to buy Korban and Sibor, really we're going to learn that there were many other functions for which they were allowed to use that money for, just for example, the carbon Talmud we learned needed to be examined and it needed to be examined four days prior to be brought, people were paid to do that. The salary of paying the people that were examining the Korban and Sibur, making sure that they are unblemished, came from that year's half a shekel. V'chuli, says the Gemara Vaita. When the Mishnah says mashmi'in, which means they would proclaim. Now literally it means they would make it be heard. How would they make it be heard? It can be done uh, through writing, there are it was different ways. And it's a verbal proclamation. As it says, ah, that's what Yehuda ubi Yerushalayim. And, and, and that's a passage regarding taking a census. So it says, Vayitnu koil. And Vayitnu koil means a oral proclamation. And that is exactly what we do. Says the Gemara. Tamon taninon. Tamon taninon means tanan hosam. Ta- tamon means over there. Tamon taninon. It says in the Mishnah in Megillah that ain bain adarishin. Adarshaini elo mikra Megillah matanis lev yoinim. Says the tiklin chadatin. Meaning that if they read the Megillah Ba'adar Echad, they already read it, you have to read it again in Adar Shani. Now, there's some, there's some nuance over here that he's not speaking out. Today we have a fixed calendar. 
Of course, if they read it in another edition, they have to read it in another Shani. What really the Mishnah is saying in Megillah, the way he's explaining it, is that if when other edition was here, we didn't yet have another Shani, we didn't know there was going to be another Shani. Only after we celebrated Purim did the base then decide that they're adding another other as they may, as they could, as long as you didn't enter Rosh Chodesh Nisan. As long as you didn't enter the day that potentially can become Rosh Chodesh Nisan, they can, make a, they can be Ma'abar the whole Shana, they can add an other Shani. Even in that case, you have to read it again. I'm just giving you a heads up, there is a nuance. And that is, is that if when the Megillah was read, let's say it was read on the 15th for people that live in a walled city, and then the Beisden decided to make an other Shani, in the other Shani they are allowed to read it on the 14th, even in the Krachim. But they have to read it again, and they have to give Matanis Lev Yoinim, even though they gave it already. And even though when they gave it, they didn't even know there's going to be a second other. And that's because an Ani knows that whenever the Megillah is read, money is going to be distributed. So he's going to have a lot of tzad if he hears the Megillah and there won't be money. Unlike Matanis Lev Yoinim. Unlike, I'm sorry, Mishloi Achmanos. Again, that if Mishloi Achmanos was given the way you were learning here, an other edition, when it was just the only other, then it doesn't have to be repeated when they decided to make an other Shani. But, uh, but, but what? Yeah. Mikra Megillah and Matanis Lev Yoinim. Rab Simon, in the name of Rabbi Shobhan Levi, holds, Af shimua shikolim vikelayim binayim. You know, it's even if the announcement was made in other Aleph, the goal is for these announcements to be made, let's speak about the shkolim, 30 days prior to the shkolim Nisan. If it was made, what now turns out to be other rishon, it's too far away from when the shkolim have to come to the mishkan. 60 days is not good. When you invite someone, when you remind someone, there is a, there's a science to it. You know, it's too close, it's too late. Why didn't you tell me before? But if you say it too early on, so what did you accomplish? They already knew it, they forgot it, they'll forget it again. Reb Chelboi v'Rafuna, Reb Chelboi in the name of Rafuna, and Rab in the name of Reb Chia, Rabba, they called Reb Chia the great Reb Chia, they hold that Hakol Yoitzim v'Yudalit Shuzman Kiriyoso, the way we just explained it. Hakol Yoitzim means that if, if, only if, this is a, 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 a exceptional case, if when there was other Aleph, it, there was only one other. And the Krachim read it on the 15th. So they did their mitzvah the way they should. Then Beisden decided, then Beisden decided to add a new month. So yes, the Mishnah writes in Megillah that you have to repeat the Mikra Megillah and other Shani and Matanus Lev Yoinim, but at least the Krachim are allowed to read it on the 14th. They don't have, they can read it on the 15th also. But if they read it on the 14th, then they'll be Yoitzim. Unlike normally in other, if you, live, if you are B'nai Krach, then you can't have the whole B'nai Krach reading it on the 14th, as we'll learn more details of this in Ahmed Vez. Weiter. Omar Rabbi Yoisi. V'yo'ois. V'yo'ois means it's correct. It's correct. Ich bin moide. Has to be that, that both Shkalem and Kalayim have to dafka be in other Shani. Always. Because klum omru mashmiyim ala shkolim, as we just explained in the beginning of the Gemara today, why do they make these announcements? Like today is it not for shivi Yisrael shkolim be'ay nasam? That's the reason. So im at amar ba'adar harishain. So then at kedoyin. Until then, until Rosh Chodesh Nisan, ah, ish b'shata shit and yomim. There's sixty days. Sixty days is not going. A person hears an announcement and they know that they're telling him sixty days from now. They're not going to do it right away. They're going to procrastinate. And by the time they have to attack and remember that now it's already the end of the time, it's too late. Klum Amru, similarly, Klum Amru Yoitzim Afala Klayim. Like, why, do, why does Beisden go out on the, uh, they go out on the 15th, right? And, and, the, and subsequently, th- uh, 15 days before Beisden goes out, they make announcements. Is like Kedei Sheyiu Hatzemachim Nikarim? It, why don't they announce it Shvat? Because even if there's already a certain mixture on the field, it's not yet discernible. The growth, the sprouting is too little. So, im oimer at other rishain. If the announcement for the Kalaim would suffice to be made in other rishain, which is prior to spring, too much earlier than spring, is at Kedoin. Until, until the 15th, when they're going to base them themselves, will go uprooted. Inun de kikin, they are too small. So what's the point of announcing it? You know, you want to go out and just uproot it, fine. 
But if you want to give the people the opportunity to, you know, to see what's happening, to do it themselves, then they have to be able to see that there's a problem, and that's connected to spring, and therefore it's the other closest to spring, other shenny. Okay. Rab Sho'al. Now it's Gavaldik. When you have in Talmud Bavli, Sho'al, Sho'al means that whoever's making the question doesn't know. So here there's a klal. And let's read another uh, Tiklan Chadatin. It's eight lines before the bottom of the Amr. Amid. And he says that here, whenever you have the word Sho'al, you know what it means? Rab Chizkiya Sho'al Ma'ata Kolaymet. Sho'al Eitzel B'nei Beis HaMedrish Im Yaskimu Al Shitosoi which is already Hanachoyna Be'enov. V'chein hu sugyas ha-Yirushalmi b'chol makayn. When you have the word Sha'al, Enoi Lashen She'ela, or V'iboyem. Sha'al doesn't mean he asked. Sha'al means, do you agree with me? Sha'al means, I know this to be for sure. But he wanted to know whether other people agree. Asking for approval. Back inside the Gebarah. So what, what was the Sha'al now that we, Me'ata, now that we clarified that the uh, Shkolem and Kalayim, right, has to be Dafkin Adr Sheni. In other words, there's a, it, it's being said at a time prior to the Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And you're right, saying it in, in Eretz Yisrael, in Adr Rishon, people have too much time, they're going to they delay it and then they might forget it again. But if the goal is to get the Shkolem to the Beis HaMikdash for Rosh Chodesh Nisan, so he's saying, as we spoke out, that Bismana Bay is the mitzvah, the obligation of giving a half a shekel, wasn't only on B'nai Eretz Yisrael. It was like we said, Kohanim Levim Yisraelim, and it was also on B'nai Chutzlar, San Yidin. So maybe in Chutzlar, they should have to announce it in the beginning of the winter. Because if you think that nowadays, what do they call that snail mail? I don't know the Lushan in English. You know, there's mail that doesn't go in three seconds. Imagine then. So if the goal is to get it there, so he's saying, Before the roads are closed because of the cold weather. In order, in order where the, the, the Gura takes out the word, and, 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 and don't forget guys, really what we're saying now, not everyone agrees with. They sent their Shkolem. His premise was, is that when they do in the Beis HaMikdash, the true Masalishka, we need for everyone Shkolem to be in there. Because if my shekel did not make it into that chamber, and in the Beis HaMikdash they removed it for usage of Karbana Sibur, then I won't have a schus, I won't be part of that. So in order for the Shkolem of Bnei Bavel, or people who lift further to make it there, L'choyra, Mashmiyam, there even earlier. You just have to figure out how much time do they need. Always announce it 30 days before the last time. But if, if it takes three months to get there, then it should be four months before. Give them a you know, couple of days, a couple of weeks to put together the half a shekels and then to send it. The time where the Beis HaMikdash began to use it was Rosh Chodesh Nisim. But we want Luchayr, we wanted to get there prior. Now really we will learn it doesn't have to be that way. The shawl was good because not everyone agrees with Rab Chizkiah. We're going to see that when they removed the Shkolem, Rosh Chodesh Nisim, the first for the new year, it actually was also for those whose shkalim did not arrive yet. The shkalim will arrive later. But his premise was not that way. It has to be, you need to have your shekel has to be in the chamber for you to be part of the carbon sibur. So in other words, so holds Rab Chizkiah, and he wondered whether others agree with him as well. So says the Gemara, Hasiv. Hasiv means a response. Hasiv Rab Ula. Kume, Kume means Kame. Rabbi Mana, Herst, Mamash Naya, Nu, 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 Amairayim. Just know, Ulu wasn't that generation in between. No, 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 I disagree with you. Because for Hot, and when we learned him, is Sachta Shkalom a Mishnah. As we'll learn later, that Bishlai Shapurakim is Shana Tarim Amis Lishkan, which is Bifrois Ha Pesach, half Pesach. Half Pesach means a half a month before Pesach, and a half, two weeks, or 15 days. Bifrois Hat Seres. Right, the 15 days before Shavuos, and before Yisachag, and, and, this is all Ula continuing to tell the Rebbe Mana, and Amalei, Neymar, Elein the Kreven before Yisachag Pesach, is Elein the Rechoikin, I'm sorry, Neymar, Elein the Kreven before Yisachag Pesach. Why don't we say that, why did they separate it three times? I'll tell you why, that's the way he understood it. Because you're right, when you take out the Truma, only those who have money in the chamber are going to be included in those karbanos sibur. 
But you know what? Since it took different communities more time to get their shkalim into the Beis HaMikdash because they all gave it at the same time. Whether you're living close, it got there early. Whether you live far away, it took many, many more months. Maybe that's why they took it out three times. So every time it was for the new group of Jews. Those who live closer had their shkalim taken out before his Pesach. Elam the Rechaikim before his Atzeres. The Elam the Rechaikim minhoim before his Achag. And therefore, if they would make the announcement like Rab Chizkia in the beginning of winter, which means that even the farthest Jews, phys- geographically far, their shkalim would make it on time before Pesach because they already sent it four or five months later, then why would we need to have three trumas halishka? Then you would, forget, then you would have everyone shkalim in there, then you can take it out only once. Or take it out, whatever. The whole, the whole taking it out three times is l'chayda because the shkalim are arriving at different times. Why is it arriving at different times? It's because they only announced shkalim on a shkodesh adar. And then a chanami, if you lived far away, your shkalim got there before shvuas. Or your shkalim got there after shvuas, but your shkalim were used in that truma that was done prior to sukkah. It's beis amid beis. So amalei ravmana, this is ravmana responding to Ula. That kula ka'acha siba. That I will agree with Rab Chizkiyo. No people, we wanted ideally for everyone's money to make it there before the Shchodesh Nisan. And yes, the Mashmiyam ala Shkolem and our Mishnah is only for people that live in Eretz Yisrael. And for people that live in Babel, you make the announcement months earlier. Now if everyone Shkolem Taka got to the base of Migdash, be prior the new year, which begins Rosh Chodesh Nisan, so that's for another reason. To publicize and to remind everyone that we all had a share in a carbon sibur. No, it's, you know, all these carbonis sibur, you can't have one guy saying, I'm donating all the carbonis for the year. Hashem did not want it that way. Hashem wanted for every year to have Poshet a part of. We, are all, we were all shutfas in it. We were all participants in it. And people should remember that, ah, we're going back into the Lishka chamber and the money in there came from all over the world. But here we have a machloikas of the Amirayim, whether it was all given, all reminded and given in the month of Adar, or whether we wanted all of the shkalim, or whether it was all given on the Shkhaidah Shadah, which means that it arrived in the Beis Hamikdash different times in the year, or whether it came to the Holy Temple at the same time because people that lived further away would send their shkalim earlier on. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yehuda Bar Pazi in the name of Rabbi. He says the following, that hey nikrov nives, you cannot read, how can you read the following verses without being overcome with, the, with, with fear and trepidation of the power of our lower self, of the animal soul and of the Yetzir Hara. And he, now going into shkalim. Letoiva, when we were asked to donate now really in the Beis HaMikdash, as we'll see, there were three trumas. Mishalish trumas hakas of medaber. When we built a Mishkan, there was a truma that was any amount from those 13, 15 items. But then we have a half a shekel that was a one-time half a shekel given specifically for the Adonim, those heavy silver sockets, and those were primarily lechaper al nafshri seichem for the chato egel. And then you had the half a shekel that we're learning about that continued every single year, and that was in order for every member of Kalal Yisrael to have their part of the Karbanai Sibur. But, but when it comes bechlal to the donations for the temple, it says kol nediv leiv, that who donated people that were generous, which implies that if someone was not generous, they taka did not donate. And anachanami, when it comes to the first truma that we spoke about, which wasn't the half a shekel that everyone has to give, when we spoke about the 13, 15 items, it was optional. And who gave? Kol nediv leiv. Now it could be that, uh, that 90% of the Jews were in a div leiv, but, but not everyone. But lina, when we were giving money, to, to make the golden calf. So there the Torah doesn't say that only the Nadiv Leif gave. It says, Vayisparku. Right? That was Aaron's delay tactic. He told people to take off their jewelry. And who took off the jewelry? Kol Ha'am. In other words, we, the Jewish people, we are givers. Question is, how do we channel it? Always, we're always givers. So when it came to the eagle, it sounds like we were even more generous. Next, Letoiva. Vayoytzei Moshe, right? That's in Parshish Yisrael, Lekras, or Elohim. No, we needed to have a Moshe Rabbeinu to inspire us to go close to the two Harsinai. Lera, 
But when it came to coming to, to, for something negative, and that's in, re, in reference to the asking Moshe Rabbeinu to send them an aglim, it doesn't say that Moshe Rabbeinu led the people to make the ask. They came by on their own. Vatikrevun Eli, who kulchem, on your own. Third, Latoiva, as we just finished in Psachim, a lot about them, Tilim and Shida, Az Yosh and Moshe Vene Yisrael. With all of the three Tanoim, how it was done, there are three Shittas. But you needed to have a Moshe to inspire us to sing for Hashem. But Lira, Vatisa Kol Ha'edon. In other words, what he points out is, is Raf Tvuas Bekoyach Shar, just to be aware that there's a certain Koyach that the animal has more than the godly. Now, all of this is good because all of this means that when we direct Right, when we serve God, not only with the godly soul, when we serve Hashem with the animal soul, we have a lot more koyach. But he's just pointing out to be aware. To be aware is that all of these tendencies in the animal, it's all zelo umaze. It's uh, uh, getting close. You see all these uh, giving the But if it's coming from our darker side, it has even more power. And if, God forbid, it's channeled that way, it does even more damage. Omar, Rabchia, Bar Abba, there's a fourth thing. When it says, Achein, Hishkimu, Hishchisu, in Tzfanya, you woke up, right, for corrupted purposes. And we have, Achol Hashchas Hashoyo Oisim, it was Bahashkama Hoyo Oisim Oisa. And here also, when it comes to waking up to do a mitzvah, what's the Chazal? Zrizin Magdim and Lemitzvahs. Which means not everyone is a Zodis. Right? To get out of bed to learn early in the morning, it takes a certain amount of effort. But if a person, God forbid, that then they passed, when the Yidin were then in the mode of getting up to do, to do something that is corrupt in the eyes of God, then everyone got up early. No, it's all of these tendencies that we have, if it's coming from the animal soul, they come with more power. And for that we have to be mindful. Or using his words, we have to be, uh, we have to be uh, afraid of it. You have to really respect it and make sure that we all direct it only for the good. And in that Omar Abba Bar Acha, Ein At Al Shul Umazu. You cannot comprehend, he says, the contradictory behavior of these people, which is that Nitbe Imla Egel Venoisnin. And vice versa. And what he's really pointing out is, is that the core of a yid is to be a giver. Elama, because of the nefesh alikis, nefesh Bahamas, it can find expression in opposite ways. It's a very important. So, I, so a person looks in themselves and they know in their heart of heart it's pure emes. But make an effort to take that core and to use it for something that God wants. Because it's going to find expression. My brother used to tell me when we had lachaim on the table by a fabrengen and you don't drink it and you don't drink it and then someone knocks it over. In other words, all of these tendencies, we got to use it for the good. Says the Gemara Tana, we learned. Hey, guys, we have to get used to this. Like, who, who, who is this Tana? So this is Rabbi Yossi Bar Hanin. Now, if you have the new Gemara that's spelled out, you have to chap what this is. Like this. Tona, Rabbi, Rabbi Yossi Bar Hanino, Haddo Masnisa, he learned the following Braiso, and he's going to Pasha Struma where it says, of Tohoir, Yovoi Zov Shal And that will be a chaper al Zov Shal Egel. And that's all connected. In other words, even the materials, the materials that were used for the kapoides, gold, was the same material that was used from the Egel. The same that the, the core is like neutral. It could be go, it can go either way. And, 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 and that's the ultimate, and that's really the ultimate shuva. That the same tendency, the same goal that was used for Lara, we have the koyach later to use for good. Rab Chagi, Bishem, this is Rab Shmuel Bar Nachman. This is not the Rashbag. Uh, because Lachayra, because this is Lachayra, this is, this is an Amoira. That shalish truma is nemru be parsha zois, which is par, parsha, par, this parsha's truma. Guys, it's chitas, Rashi. Zois, trumas, adonim. Right? No, I'm sorry, be parsha zois. Number one is trumas adonim. And this trumas adonim, just to know, was, was lechaper on the, on the chit. Truma shkolim. So the, the half a shekel that was given was to buy the one time the Adonim. The yearly half a shkolem were given for the Karbanes Sibur. And then you add the Trumas HaMishkan, the one time 
donating of the materials to build the Mishkan. As it says, not only the Mishkan. And now, the Gemara explains further. So, Truma Sam Mishkan, what is that? That was to build the Mishkan. That was the 13, 15 materials. And was there an amount? No. Was there an obligation? No. Mashi Yirtsu Yasu. Means, if you wanted, you donated. You donated what you wanted. You donated how much you wanted. Truma Shkalim, which was then, as it is every year, Likarbin, here it's not that you are allowed to choose how much you want to give. Here, as we'll see in a moment, every year it has to give a half a shekel. And again, this is a very important. Whenever this is also being used for the senses, then only the ones who are obligated did it. If it's not being done for the senses, if it's being done only for Karbana Sibur, then even the women, even children, you can give for children. Now, where was there, you can do whatever you want with it, that's not on, on the behalf of the giver. The giver gave the half a shekel. Question is, what was done with your half a shekel? And let me just tell you that it's not only Karbana Sibur. It's not only Karbana, like we mentioned, when you needed to pay for people to inspect the Karbana, it was paid from the half a shekel money. Now, did I have the right to decide where my half a shekel should go? I want my half a shekel, should only go for Musaf Shabbos. I, I didn't have that option. That's the next line. That Mashi Yirtzu, the recipients, the Beis Hamikdash, they were allowed to do with it what, whatever they seemed fit. So everything that you may use the money from that uh, account of the half a shkalim, they had the discretion to decide and not the donors. You gave the half a shekel and the Beis HaMikdash used it for whatever they needed to use it for. In order to make sure that everyone, has an, as everyone is equal. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not giving for this and you're giving for that. We are all giving for the collective. Trumas Adonim was used Dafka for the Adonim, as it says, And that's really, the, when it, especially when it comes to the Kapara, so the ultimate Kapara is all predicated on the fact that in the core of our core, that we have a Chelek Alaka, Memal Mamish, that can never even be tainted, and everyone has the same, the, in, the, in the source we're all the same. So when we have to affect Kapara, which is really to be Megala, the Yechid HaShav Nefesh, everyone is going to be the same. Amar Abavun, I want you to know that these three trumas are not only mentioned in Truma, but they are repeated again in Parshas Kisisa. Af be Parsha Zois Nema Bagimah Trumas in Kisisa it says, number one is Machzis Hashekel Trumas Hashem. That's the first time. Number two, again, that's the word Truma. Number two is Yitin Truma Hashem. Number three, Lasse says Trumas Hashem. Again, they refer to they refer to the three. The three separate trumas, just bekitzer. There are many Maimari Hasidis on these three trumas, and the Rebbe many times, you know, the, the structure, the Yesoid, is that truma is really connected to Torah, Tfila, and Gemilas Chasadim. And when it comes to truma, actual truma, which is taking off a certain amount of the produce, that biblically there's no minimum amount, unlike Maisa, that it has to be exactly 10%, and Al Tarbala Asir Umadois. But by Truma, the Chazal said that it should be either 1 out of 40, that's the Ayin Toiv. The Ayin Bainan is gives 1 out of 50, 2%, and the Ayin Ra gives 1 out of 60. And we have a lot in Hasidus that Truma, which is Toira Men, there's the us giving for Toira. Toira is connected to Mem, to Ayin Toiv. When it comes to Tfila, the Rabbim speak about that in Aramish, Truma means Trei Mimeya. Tremi Meya is, is the average, is the 2%. The Tremi Meya, the Rebbe explains that it has to do with tefillah, because if you imagine, if you count the letters of Shema and Baruch Shem, al Pikabali, you have 49 letters, and then Hashem comes and He gives the 50th letter. And we say Shema, B'Mesir nefesh twice a day, and that's the part of the Avoy Desat tefillah, that's Tremi Meya. And when it comes to Gamach, to Mitzvahs, the Rebbe explains that the whole concept of Maisa, Maisa means you're being forced. That when someone does something for God, even if they don't understand yet, and they don't feel yet, they feel like they're being forced, but they do it nonetheless, that's another way of getting close to God. I'm doing it because God wants that. When a person taka, doesn't want to do it, they do the minimum possible. That's the one out of 60. Anyways, this is the three trumois, al pi chasidis, how it connects to our avoidance nowadays of Tlaidat Fila and Gamach. Another interesting thing that nowadays the minig is, as the Ramah writes, is that we give the half a shekel. Now meaning that pre Beis Hamikdash. When the Beis Hamikdash is going to be built today, then we're going to have the obligation. 
to give a half a shekel, one half a shekel. But the minig Yisrael of giving prior to Purim, whether it is on Tainus Esther, or if you forgot to give it to your mamish on Purim, then our minig is also that we give three half a shkolim. Now, three half a shkolim, because in the beginning, this is the chazal over here, that we gave the three half, the, there were three separate trumas, the chulei. Vaiter. The Mishnah says, Betez vav boi koidem esam agila bikrachim. Says the Gemara, Loi Kain Amar Rabchelmei did not Rabchelmei in the name of Rafuna and Rab in the name of Rab Chia Raba. Didn't we just learn on Amad Aleph that Hakol Yotzim be Yudalid Shuzman Kiriyasa? He just made that statement. Now we already explained that statement. We already spoke to Maskan of the Gemara. He wasn't saying that everyone can fulfill it on Yudalid. He really said was is that if there was an other stam, and 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 everyone read it and the Krach read it on the fifteenth. Then based and decided to add another other, then they can fulfill, and you have to repeat, and you have to repeat the Megillah, and you have to give Atonis Lev Yoinim. In that unusual scenario, they can, that's, we know that, that's the Maskana. But it sounded like he's saying, Hakal Yoitzim Yudalit. But how can that be? So the Gemara answers, Loi Ba El Lamdecha. Really, what he meant to say is, Shakol Ha Mitzvah, Hanoi Hagis Ba Adar. But other Shani, all of the mitzvahs we're speaking here on the Mishnah. When the Mishnah spoke about many things, like they would fix the roads, they, right? They would, they would, they would, they would inspect the mikvahs. All of it was done, right, on other Shani and not in other Rishon. That is what. That is what uh, the Mishnah is trying to emphasize. But the Mishnah is not negating the potential, the possibility, and and, and that's on the fifteenth. So we also speak about that normally on the 15th of Adar, the Megillah is read in Karachim. But the Mishnah did not mean to say is that there is never a scenario where the, where the Megillah cannot be read on the 14th, Lebenei Karach. Okay. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yoisa and Rabacha. Have a Yosem, they were sitting. Omar Rabbi Yoisa, Le Rabacha, Loi Mistabra El Lesha'avar. This statement that Hakol Yoitzim be Yudalid doesn't make sense that we're only speaking about a scenario where it's already after the 15th, it's after, and a person who, B'nai Krach, who read the Megillah on the 14th, wants to know whether B'diyevet he was Yoitzah, so we're telling him, Rab Chelba, he's telling him you were Yoitzah. No, that's not what he's saying. Avol lahaba, but, and not lahaba. It's not that way. It's even if it's before the 15th. The B'nai Krach read it on the 14th. He wants to now know whether he has to hear it again. Even to him, says Rab Chelba in the name of Rafuna, says Rab in the name of Rab Chia, Rabba, that since you heard it on the 14th, you're good to go. This is what the Pshat and Rab Chelba. Problem is, for Hatani, but it says in Abraisa clearly that Makam Yamim, that if you have a place and you don't know whether this place had, was Mukav Chaima, Miyamais Yeshua Ben Nun or not, you don't know whether this place is a halachically ir or a krach. So what does it say in the, in the Braisa? You have to read it Shnei Yamim. Now if Rab Chelboi is right, and if our understanding of Rab Chelboi is right, that he's telling you that if a B'nai Krach read it on the 14th, even before the 15th, you tell him you don't have to do it. You were Yoitzah. So why is it that if there is a place that has a doubt whether you have to read it on the 14th or on the 15th, it says in the B'raisa you read it on both days, if reading it on the 14th, even L'Chathchila is good for the, four, for the 15th, so just read it on the 14th. That was the question that he brought out. So Amalei, so Rabacha tells Rabbi Yoisa, Uf, Ano, Sovar Kain. You learned correct. You understood Rab Chelboi correct. Rab Chelboi is saying that if a person will hear the Megillah, B'nai Krach, on the 14th, Lechat Chile, he doesn't have to read it on the 15th. But I, one second, I, the Braiso, says otherwise, because if you are Yoitzel, Lechat Chile, why would you read it two days? So Rab Acha did not find it important to give the answer, to explain it. All he confirmed this is that you don't use the Braiso to misunderstand Rab Chelba. You understood Rab Chelba correct, but now we have a contradiction. So, Amar Rav Mano, it's correct. It's correct. It's not a contradiction. That Elu, Biyudalid, that if you read it on the 14th, that's what Rab Chelba said, immense degra, loy choyze vekariya bitazvav. Shema shaymim loy. If you're going to tell a person who read it on the 14th that you have to read it on the 15th, will you listen to him? You won't listen to him. You don't have to read it 
You don't have to read it on the 15th. Im at oimer kein nimsas oiker zman karachem biyodecha. Oh, he says like this. He says it's not a problem because of the following. If and if the normal year, we're speaking about a normal circumstance versus a unusual circumstances. We're speaking about everyone versus an individual. If everyone read it on the 14th, and they say, we, since we read it on the 14th, we don't want to have to read it on the 15th, then, I'm sorry, then we don't listen to him. Because if we would allow Bnei Karachim to read the Megillah on the 14th, then we're going to be oiker, the whole Zman of Karachim, which is to read it on the 15th. Rab Chalbe was not speaking about the, an entire city. He's speaking about an exceptional case like we spoke on Amad Aleph. Or even if it's a normal year that everyone knew from the outset that there's going to be two Adars, if one Yachid heard it on the 14th, that is what Rab Chalbe is saying, that you were Yoytze Lechatchila, even Lechatchila. So that's how we reconcile the Braisa and the statement. The Braisa is speaking about everyone, that if everyone read it on the 14th, and they're going to come and say, we don't want to read it on the 15th, and we don't listen to that, because then we'll be oiker. Vaiter says, This is Rabshon Megam Liel, Mitzvah Yisana Hagaz Ba'adr Shainim, Einoi Hagaz Ba'adishoyim. In other whenever you have mitzvahs, and you have to know which other she you could keep them in, the rule is, Bishaini, not Ba'adishoyim. Chutz, aside of the prohibition of making a eulogy, the prohibition of fasting, both on the 14th and of the 15th of Ador, that that negative way of celebrating the Nes, Shem Shavis Bazel Bazel, we may not fast on Purim Katan, we may not make a Hesbet and a Tainus on Shushan Purim Katan, but other than that, Rashbach holds that the main other is Adar Sheni. Says the Gemara, Rebbe Bo, Herstanomen, that's a name. And Rabbi Yirmiya, in the name of Rab, and Rab Simon, in the name of Rabbi Shoban Levi, says that Allah is Kirashbag, that the mitzvahs that we have in Adar, as a rule, they apply to Adar Sheni. Now, Rafuna, who was the rabbi of the city of Tsipoirin, Omar, he said that Hinig. Rabbi Hanina Bitsipoirin Kahado de Rashbag, that in that, that, that Rabbi Hanina, he said that the minig is to follow the Rashbag. In other words, the Gemara is Medayik that Loyamar Ella Hinig, Avala Halacha Loi. So do we paskin like Rashbag, or is there a minig like Rashbag and Bachlal Lamay Nafkemina? So look inside the Tiklan Chadatin, second to last line on the bottom of the Amit. The Nafkemina, the Halacha, means Darshinan Bepirka. You have to dash him that way. We pass him like Rashbag. Whenever you hold that the minig is to follow like him, then you don't dash in it in public. Elamaf, someone individually comes and asks you what to do. Avol Let's go back in the Gemara. However, Avol Iyin Storois, lest you think, since we are either paskening like Rashbag, or at least the minig is like Rashbag. That what? That other Shani is the main Ador, so someone can think, Oi Bazoi, let's call other Risha in Shvat. In words, if other is other Shani, so why are we even calling it other? Don't make that mistake. Le'inyan Shtarais, if, if, if the date is other, then you're right, other Risha. Not only that, since other Shani, according to the Rashbag, is the main other, when you write other Shani, you don't have to write other Shani. You just write Stam. Other Stam is other Shani. However, the, the month before is not Shvat Shani. It's other, but we call it other edition. However, that is Rashbag, but Rebbe Yehuda Oimer, the opposite. That other Rishon is Stam. Because he holds that the main other is other Rishon. And other Shani, when you write it in a document, you write Tanyon, second Ador. Now, just telling you the Minik Chabad. That when it comes to a yard site, we will follow Rabbi Yehuda. The may, if, it means if someone passed away in a Shana Me'uberes, then of course, in the subsequent years that are, that have two months, then you will mark the yard site if someone passed away in other Shani. Then the main yard site will be in other Shani. If someone passed away in other Rishon, the main yard site is going to be in other Rishon. The question is always what happens if someone passed away in other Stam, in a Shana Pshuta? When do you mark it? Our minigis, we mark it primarily in other Rishon. Even though we also try to say Kaddish and other Shani, but it's not called the main one. For example, all of the, you know, the shul politics, if there are two chiyuvim, who is going to daven for the Amid? So the rule is, is that if someone is marking the yard site on other Shani, 
he's secondary. Because the main, the main yard side is other Rishon. Bar Mitzvah is different by us. If a child is born in other Stam, then the Bar Mitzvah is Dafka in other Shani. To make sure that he has complete 13 years. But here we have a source, we have this Machlekes, as to which other is the main other. Chabra, Baruch Hashem, we cover the first one, God willing, to be continued tomorrow.